It is always hard to try and keep track of transfers, especially when it comes to Leeds United, because there are so many stories going on at the same time. So many of them are actually evolving and changing as time goes on. And so many of them get picked up by so many weird news aggregators that over time they sort of turn into Chinese whispers and no one knows what the truth is anymore. So let's make it a little bit easier. I had a quick look at an article in the YEP earlier on, and I combined that with what I know about various transfer moves that are going on at the moment. And I figured I would summarize every single Leeds United move and rumor that we know to date in a quick video. If I missed anyone, let me know and I might do a follow up video in a couple of weeks just to get everyone back on track. But first, before I dive into it, subscribe. Cheers. I'm trying to get to 4,000 before the start of the season. It'd be massively appreciated if I could get you on board. So let's get into it. And yes, I'm going through absolutely everybody. And that includes Charlie Allen. Yes, we'll be going quickly through ones like this. He was released by Leeds and he has failed to find a move so far. Not sure where we'll land. Maybe Vanarama National League, maybe League Two. Not a top talent. Didn't kick on like we thought he would and got released. Another player that got released is Luke Ayling. Released by Leeds United after a six-month loan at Middlesbrough. He's now there for another two years after he proved to be really impressive. Got a lot of assists for them, and I think he came out as their player of the season. Not 100% sure. If it was a fan vote, he definitely did. We have another released player, which is Lewis Bate. He went on loan to MK Dons this season. Apparently really impressed over there, which is kind of good for him. But at the same time, he's not quite showing the quality that you need if you want to be at the top of the championship or pushing to the Premier League. He's expected to find a place at an EFL side at some point soon, but he's got nothing signed just yet. Another technical release, but it's a little bit more complex than that, is Cody Drame. Since he's been at Leeds United for at least three years and is under a certain age, we need to offer him a contract if we're going to get any compensation from this. Therefore, we've offered him a contract on his existing terms, and he can stick around if he wants to. But in all likelihood, he is likely to sort of move on somewhere else and that club would have to pay us compensation because we've put a contract on the table. Another release player is Jan Paveda, likely going to a championship side with clubs including Cardiff and Luton being interested. And now we're into the slightly more interesting cases. Extensions. Liam Cooper is currently in talks for a one-year contract extension. Those talks are struggling to happen at the moment because obviously he's away at the Euros and also in talks for a new contract. Uh, Eh, is Jamie Shackleton. Um, we don't have any further information aside from the fact that they're in discussions over it, but I feel like if he wants to get any football, he's going to have to move on just because it feels like it's not going to happen under Daniel Farker. Another big player that we don't know if will be around next season is Joe Rodon. Yeah, it's the first biggie of the video um, who left us after the end of his loan and seemed to really sort of want to find a home when he was at Leeds United last season. Spurs don't want him, probably looking for a permanent move, and the price they've pinned to him has reportedly fallen from 15 to 12 to 10 million pounds. But apparently there is competition from the likes of Ipswich, which could make it a little bit trickier to secure that move. I think we're in a good enough place to try and force a move, but we'll have to find out. Time will tell. Another player that might want to return to Leeds, another Welshman, is Connor Roberts. Leeds are apparently open to buying him. It'd be something like £3 million, if I remember correctly. But at the end of the day, it is Burnley's decision. Burnley will see us as a promotion rival going into next season, and they might not want to necessarily strengthen us, no matter what the price point. If you lose a competitive advantage, that can be worth more than money to them. Next up, we have a player that was potentially considering departing the club, but the stories have completely died out. It is Ilya Gruev. There were early rumours of a departure to... The Bundesliga, specifically Dortmund, but apparently the Champions League finalists aren't that interested because that talk died instantly. I don't know if that was a case of agent talk or that was actual interest and they just sort of went, how much would Gurev be? And we just palmed them off, but seems to have at least been a topic of conversation. Also a topic of conversation recently is Willy Nonto. Very obviously a topic of conversation because... Of course he is. A hell of a lot of stuff has been going on around him, and there is lots and lots of interest. Specifically listed were Napoli, Inter Milan, and a bunch of other non-Italian sides. You can see a couple of lower-end Premier League clubs potentially considering a move. Everton did last year, and after Nonto nearly left last summer, it's easier to see why he'd consider the same thing this year, especially if his best friend, Crescencia Somerville, were to leave. This one's gotten a little bit complex recently. 
So we're apparently looking at something like 30 to 40 million pounds. That was especially according to, I think, Fabrizio Romano mentioned that number when he was on a podcast recently. Clubs that are interested include Liverpool, include Chelsea, include Brighton, who are apparently actively open talks with him, which is very indicative that a move is going to happen. And Newcastle have also been reported recently. We don't know where he's going to end up, but that fee of 30 to 40 million pounds seems like it's on the button, especially if this turns into a bidding war between a bunch of different Premier League clubs. Next up, uh, another potential extension, Sam Byram. Not a potential extension, is an extension. He had a one-year contract extension sort of baked into his contract at Leeds United. We've triggered it, so we'll have him for this season. He's decent enough squad depth, I guess. People perhaps weren't expecting him to stay at the club next season, and another player that people might not have been expecting to stay at the club is Brendan Aronson. Signed as a midfielder at the start of the 22-23 season. Was it 22-23? Yeah. Um... 23-24, he spent away at Union Berlin. We thought he was going to be away forever, but he's had talks with Daniel Farker and now will be remaining at the club for the 24-25 season. It's a spot where we sort of have to get behind him. A lot of people might not like him, but he's at the club. You might as well cheer him if he does good, boo him if he does bad, treat him like you would any other Leeds player. Someone that is reportedly staying away is Mark Rocker. He's apparently set for a permanent move to Real Betis over the summer. Approximately, it's estimated that it'd be something between five and eight million pounds. I've seen a lot of discussions that value him at eight million pounds, but based on what we paid for him, the length of his contract, it would only be five million pounds for us to break even on FFP. So somewhere in that five to eight million range is what I would expect and approximately what is being reported. Another player that will probably not be here next season this time because of a loan clause, is Jack Harrison. Gone back out on loan to Everton. In my opinion, good riddance. He was at Man City, struggling, not doing anything. Leeds United tried to give him a home, and the moment we got relegated, he left and started talking bad about the club. You might as well stay away at that point. Another player I would expect to stay away is Diego Llorente. Um, had a clause with Roma for a departure for four million pounds ish. Might have been five million euros, four million quid, somewhere in that area. Um, was expected to have that triggered, and that ended up not quite happening yet. So that's very, very complex. Either way, he'll probably find a move to somewhere in Serie A, somewhere in Spain, for the rough three to five million pound range. That would again be at least break even on FFP, which is pretty good. No losses found you might as well take it. A player that we might struggle to sell, on the contrary to Diego Llorente, is Rasmus Christensen. When he returns from the Euros, we're expecting to have talks on sort of his future at Leeds United, not even because we necessarily want to keep him, but because there's so few interested clubs. You have to consider he will have a very high wage, didn't do much to impress when he was out at Roma. Maybe he can have a good Euros, but we'll have to find out. For championship level, he's probably fine. But maybe if he has a good Euros, we could be looking at a move. I'm not 100% certain. Also, I've got hair in my eye. That's why I keep on scratching it. I don't know if it's visible. Oh, well. um, next up, another player that is in a similar spot is Max Fuber, but for the opposite reason. Monch and Gladbach rather want him, but we are apparently valuing the player at £12 million. I don't know what their valuation is, but it's not reaching what we're valuing him at. So he's apparently said goodbye to his teammates at Gladbach. Potentially there's a move for another club on, but he's in the same sort of spot as Christensen, same sort of spot as Cooper, where he's away at the Euros. He's focusing on what he's doing over there rather than what he's doing domestically. So those conversations will have to wait. I reckon if he wants to work his way back into the first team, especially after what happened last year when he was apparently offered the captaincy, it's going to take a hell of a lot of work for him to get back into the good books of Daniel Farker. Those are players that have been here before, but there are also potential moves to Leeds United, including one for a young centre-back who is Spanish-born but plays for the Irish youth side, I think. Anselmo Garcia McNulty. He's very young. I think uh, 19, 20 years old-ish, plays at centre-back, can be a defensive midfielder for Pex Vol. I believe that's in the Netherlands, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, we're not the only club in for the signing, though, because Leicester City are apparently also looking at him as our Real Betis. I feel like we'd be able to offer him more minutes than them, so it gives a little bit more of a temptation to come to Leeds over those clubs. 
And there are also probably sides that are looking for people that can start as soon as possible. Another player coming in from the continent is potentially going to be Petar Ratkov. Young Serbian striker, this is some very emerging news, so we don't have all the details yet, but he's 20 years old, uh, plays for the Serbian national team, currently at the Euros, and he's pretty promising, got a lot of potential. There's apparently interest coming from us, from Rangers and RB Leipzig. I feel like of that discussion, Rangers are in the worst position, purely because they're outside that Red Bull stable, which we're not like in in yet. But I can see us maybe sort of using that to our advantage. I'd potentially see Leipzig as a more likely move, but maybe to us on loan. Who knows? Another rumoured player that is apparently very much probably not going to happen is Natan Germa. This was rumoured a while back, but um, conversations with Andrea on Just Joe's stream basically said he's not actually that good, considering that his value is £3.5 million and Andrea's got him at about a million, if that. It's not a move that I'd want us to do and not one that I can necessarily see us doing. Another very strong link that is consistently going on and not going away is one for Alfie Gilchrist. Leeds United are apparently interested in the Chelsea defender, can play at centre-back and right-back. But we're apparently waiting. Waiting to see what else happens in the market, waiting to see sort of what happens with other discussions. Preston, North End and Blackburn Rovers are also in that conversation, which means that if we wait a little bit too long, we could potentially miss out on Alfie Gilchrist. A player that we'll almost definitely miss out on is Silas. That was a very short conversation that we had at the start of the window, but 12 million euros for someone that just came third in the Bundesliga. Second in the Bundesliga, I think, actually. Probably not going to happen for a championship side, so we can probably forget that one. Another rumour that is not going away in the slightest is one of Callum O'Hare. Basically, that's looking like it's going to be a free move for a very, very strong championship level player. He plays at number 10, which is a position that we quite badly need. Played for Coventry last season. Let his contract run down. And to be honest, I don't mind that. I think Callum O'Hare would be a good addition to the squad. I think there's no reason he wouldn't come here unless Premier League clubs actively make that step forward for him. A Premier League linked player that we are also like potentially looking at is Oliver Skip. I highly doubt this one. I think he's a level above sort of upper championship. I think he's sort of mid-table Premier League sort of standard. For some reason, we've had a lot of links with him. Nothing particularly so- particularly solid. But one of the main reasons that we have those links is because of the last guy on this list, Archie Gray. People basically saying that he might be used as a bargaining chip with Archie going one way and Skip and Rodon coming the other. Don't see that one happening. He seems to be very committed to the club, content at Leeds United and aware that he needs to be playing football in order to develop, which is the most important thing at this stage of his career. Archie Gray should be staying. Let's hope. And that was all of the rumours thus far in this window that I could think of and have been compiled between that YEP article. Uh, So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if I missed anything. That would be absolutely fantastic because at the end of the day, you're a big part of these videos. Cheers. Uh, If you enjoyed the video, pop a like on it. Subscribe if you're not yet. Could even become a channel member if you fancy it. And I will see you later. Keep saying that word a lot, you. But to be fair, you are a big part of the channel. That'll be the word I pop in the comments down below. Pop the word you in the comments. Not like your name, but you. Y-O-U. See you later.